how do you avoid those cost overruns? So we have multiple supervisors. Um, we have project coordinators, project managers, and we do up subcontractor invoices beforehand. So if you call us in to tile your commercial building, we'll give you a bill of quantities. Construction is all about building things, right? Seems like a simple enough business model, but there are certain things that you can do to make sure that you're running a very efficient and successful construction business. My guest today, you'll know this name, is Peter Issa. He's general manager of Issa Construction. Joining me on this episode of Money Moves, JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's business advisory service, giving you the tools to grow your business. Hi, Peter. Welcome to Money Moves JA. Thank you guys for having me today. So how long have you been in the construction business? So I've been in the construction business about 10 years. Issa Construction is about four years old. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing your name popping up around town. Yeah, obviously the new era, uh, we tend to do a lot more marketing. So we have Instagram, we have a YouTube channel that is insightful for people to teach them how to build laying of blocks, foundations, etc. So we've kind of pushed it out from more of a marketing standpoint. So you'll obviously see us probably more than a lot of the other companies. Interesting. I didn't realize you did all of that. So I'm going to go check out your channels. Yeah, man, definitely. My family's in the construction industry. So it's one that I know a, a few little things about here and there. But construction, what's that industry like right now? Because you look around town, around Jamaica, yeah. I feel like there's a lot going on. So the industry is booming. Um, as you can see, I mean, if you're driving anywhere in Kingston, out in Portmore, in Montego Bay, you see developments happening everywhere. A lot of people hear about construction. A lot of people like the real estate development side of it. So you have people that are buying up land in Russell Heights, a half acre property and putting up apartments. And in some instances, they're doing it themselves. And then in some instances, they'll hire ISA Construction or a RELMAC and have them do the construction for them. But the industry right now is booming. What is the key to this industry, actually? How do you make it profitable? Because it seems like a simple, you buy cement or your bill, <laughs> but not necessarily. Yeah, so a lot of people, before they, before they actually get into it, they th a lot of people think it's easier than it actually is. And it's one of the most complex and complicated industries. You're managing hundreds of people on a daily basis. Um, you have to be checking up the work, ensure that it's being done properly. Um, you have to, if you price units for $25 million and it's supposed to cost you 20 or 15 million, you have to ensure the cost over, you don't have much cost overrun. Uh, managing things basically to the T. It's very important. A lot of people think you just buy cement and block and mm. gravel and sand and you mix it up and you build. But it's a lot more complicated than that. You're talking about a quantity surveyor, structural engineer, MEP, which is mechanical, electrical and plumbing. You have your architect. So there's multiple moving parts. Everybody factors into the development. You have to ensure that the building is set out correctly the foundation, the structural aspects of it. So, I mean, it's a lot of management. Each project usually lasts between eight to 14 months thereabouts. So it's doing that on a daily basis for eight to 14 months. Managing the labor, securing the site, yeah. make sure nobody teeth your materials. <laughs> so oh. that's a big issue as well, security um, and the management of the overall labor, because you'll have guys that come on and they may start a job and then they just walk off halfway through the job because they will get a request for a bigger job from somebody else. So you'll call in a tiler to tile this apartment and the tiler will show up and then he'll get a call from another developer to tile 10 apartments. Wow. So he will start tiling the apartment and then you won't see him the next day. Wow. And then you have to find somebody else. And obviously, Workers in general don't like to take on jobs when they've already been started because mm -hmm. it's more complicated and they don't want to take up an next man work. And so it's, it's an everyday battle in terms of getting good quality workers as well. Some are a lot better than others, you know, so it's to find them. And then there's a pool of workers which are shared in the industry. 
So if you're doing a development, you may be using my Tyler and I'm calling him, I can't get him. Mm -hmm. Because you, remember, you don't have consistent work. So you may be doing a development today that requires tiling and then next month you don't have any tiling work. So that tiler now is gone somewhere else. They're not full-time employees. Yeah. So 90% of the workforce is contracted workers. Yeah, trust me. Cause I was doing some home renovation. I just needed somebody <laughs> to fix a one wall, a one drywall and to find somebody. Yeah. Because there's so many projects going around. And then with the smaller jobs, obviously, it's more difficult because where that carpenter may be making $100,000 on mm -hmm. that job versus he may have to put up drywall in 10 apartments. So it's the same for the same. But doing small jobs are very difficult because the workers don't like to come there to just work on, to fix a sink or to install one sink in a bathroom. Mm -hmm. You know, he would rather go on an apartment scheme that's doing 50 apartments, so that's 150 things. So would you say there's a shortage of specialized labor in construction industry? Good labor, yes. Mm. Um, but there is not necessarily like a shortage, but it's just to find good workers that are going to come in and deliver a good product. A lot of times you have to be doing things two, three times because mm. they'll come in. And if you don't know, if you're tiling over your apartment and you don't understand what needs to be done in terms of the thin set, and if they have to lay a mortar bed to catch a level, a tiler may come, shortcut the materials, and then in six months, those tiles are popping up mm -hmm. because they've mixed the cement with the thin set, which they shouldn't do. So it's not necessarily a shortage of general labor, but a shortage of people that are going to come in and give you proper work. Mm, specialized yeah. labor and quality labor. Exactly. So if that happens now, you're going to run over budget. A hundred percent. So how do you avoid those cost overruns? So we have multiple supervisors. Um, we have project coordinators, project managers, and we do up subcontractor invoices beforehand. So if you call us in to tile your commercial building, we'll give you a bill of quantities. Um, and from the start of the project till the end, our main aim is to stick within that bill of quantities. Because overruns from deliveries of goods from broken goods, you know, the overruns can come at you real quickly and you will work for six months on a project and when it's done, you'll say you broke even or you lost money. Mm -hmm. But people think it's just, you know, it's you get into it and you make a bag of money. But without monitoring these line items every day, all day long, it will, you can get overruns very easily. Wow, so you can't skimp on the oversight because you end up paying for it later on. Exactly. And you'll pay for it for sure, mm. trust me. <laughs> look at, you look like you're talking from experience. <laughs> for sure. So talk to me about safety. Clearly, safety must be very important on a construction site. Uh, definitely. Um, so we have contractors all risk insurance, uh, which covers this construction sites. We do Wendy's uh, renovations, KFC, uh, Juicy Beef. So obviously... With the clients coming on site, you have to ensure everybody's in their PPE, which is hard hat, steel toe boots, long pants, vest, protective glasses. We've had one and two minor injuries on site. Obviously, it's the you know it's just it's gonna happen, but it's very important to ensure that you your supervisors on the site are covering the safety issue because mm -hmm. our insurance companies will show up on sites randomly. And if they show up on site and they see a guy in a slippers, mm -hmm. our insurance premium is going to go up. Mm -hmm. So we have to ensure, and they'll show up at any given time. Really? And if they see guys working without hard hats, without glasses, if they're on the scaffolding and they're not strapped into a harness, I mean, the list goes on. But safety is one of the most important items on a construction site. So insurance is another class. What type of insurance do you need? So it depends on the budget of the project. So if we're doing a $50 million project, it, it will be a certain amount. Of insurance coverage will cover a certain amount for that project. No, but I mean, what, does it, what is it called? Like construction it's, insurance? It's called contractors all risk insurance, uh. which because it's liability for the, from the contractor side of things. So if a workman gets injured on one of our sites and then he goes to a lawyer and he wants to sue us or he wants to get paid out or whatever it is, it will cover. He will then be dealing with the insurance company. 
So it protects the construction company. And whether somebody is starting a small construction company or a large construction company, insurance definitely is something that they must get down from day one. Mm -hmm. Don't start a company without having insurance. So there's insurance. You're also going to need licenses. What types of licenses do you need? So pending the development that you're doing, if you're doing a scheme for um, a client, you have to ensure you get the proper approvals. So the licensing really is the approval process. You have NEPO, you have KSAMC, like we just did a development on Seymour Avenue and we had to get approval from the Golden Triangle Committee. Mm -hmm. So there's different communities that have bodies that are managing those communities that have a say in whether you can go four floors, right. five floors, whether you can do commercial, residential. So it's all different types of approvals that right. are needed. Because then you have to get, what do I call it, the covenants, then you have covenants to get... Covenants change if it's zoned for single family yeah. and you're trying to do an apartment, which is obviously a stratted community. Um, you, have to get a, you have to get a covenant change, which takes about a year to do uh, or more. If you're doing a development and you apply to say you're going to build 10 two-bedrooms, right? You send the plans to KSAMC, they check the plans and they give you an approval, right? Which is a stamped approval, a set of drawings that are stamped that you have to have on the site at all times. KSAMC will come to the site every couple months and they'll actually come with their tape measure and they'll measure. So if the living room or the bedroom is supposed to be 15 by 15 and they come on the site and it's 30 by 40, they will then put a stop order on the development mm -hmm. because you've now built something that's not within the approved drawings. So it, there's a lot of other sides to it. It's not just you go bill and you make a bag of money. Yeah, so I imagine legal is a part of your team, so it has to be. Uh, definitely. So, exactly. Wow. So there's a lot that goes into it. Thank <laughs> you so much, Peter. All the best with Issa Construction. Thank you guys for having me. And I hope, you know, the younger generation, I'm, I want more people to come into construction so we can employ Jamaicans. Right. I mean, Issa Construction employs 100% Jamaicans. And I hope the young engineers at UTEC, UE, you know, send us your resume. And if you're looking to come into the field, you know, we'd love to have you. But thank you for having us here today. Awesome, thank you. All right, cool. Here's a recap of Peter's key points. Ensure that you don't have much cost overrun. For example, if you price units at $25 million and it will cost construction $20 million to build, make sure you don't exceed that budget. Don't skimp on the oversight. Managing labor can be one of the biggest challenges on a construction site. Construction projects last between 8 and 14 months. That's it for this episode of Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service, giving you the tools to grow your business. I'm Kalila Reynolds. You can visit my website, kalilareynolds.com, for a full summary of this episode and visit eximbankja.com. See you next time.